Hey, what is up, comic fans? It's Mr. Q Comics back with some more show and tell. Today, I have a nice stack of books I picked up from one shop. I was on a business trip to Pennsylvania, and I found a shop called uh, Bitterman's Comics and Collectibles, I believe was the full name. I think it was in East Greenville, PA. I could be mistaken. So I uh, walked in the shop, just, just popped up on Google Maps while I was driving, so I hit it up. Uh, had a lot of great stuff. I thought it was just vintage at first, but I think he does uh, pull lists and current books as well. So before I dive into the haul, guys, if you're a fan of haul videos, please do me a favor. Go down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think about these books. Okay, first book, it's not an expensive book. It is just something, uh, a cool comic cover that, that I liked. I was at uh, a comic convention last year talking about Dave Stevens' art with a guy, and he brought up this cover that he thought was Dave Stevens'. Um, and, and I, I didn't recall it. Anyways, I found this book while digging. It is not uh, a Dave Stevens cover. I honestly don't know who did it, but it's a very cool Marilyn Monroe cover. Uh, Alien Encounters number eight, uh, Marilyn Monroe and an atomic bomb, mushroom cloud, pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I think this was like $4, probably VF copy. And I totally just bought it for the cool, uh, cover art. So I don't think that is an expensive book at all. And I'm drawing a blank who, uh, who did the cover, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's that book that guy was talking about last year, so I had to grab it. All right, I got another copy of uh, Avengers 232. Remember when this book was expensive? Holy cow. Uh, first appearance of um, Eros as Star Fox. Boy, I remember when this thing was like a $40, $50 book. I can't sell this thing for 10 bucks now, so <laughs> it just goes to show you guys with the uh, comic hype. So this is back down to a cheap book. I think this was three bucks. Uh, Pretty decent shape, VF copy, so I figured why not pick up another copy. He had a copy of Cyber Frog number one. This is from Harris Comics, so I think this is the first solo series. I don't know. This is by Ethan Van Skyver, uh, who's done, um, revamped his, his series here on Indiegogo, I think. I can't remember if it's that or Kickstarter. I think it's Indiegogo. Uh, I think he's been doing pretty, pretty well. I've never read this. Um, I think they were ash cans, stuff like that, but this was only a couple bucks. So, uh, I went ahead and scooped it up. This is a copy of, this is beat. Oh man, this has got a ton of water damage, but I figured, uh, it was worth the pickup. This is not the ongoing series, but this is Ronald McDonald. He had it marked as number one, but it's one of the free giveaway ones. Um, I think you can kind of tell because instead of the Charlton logo, it has the, uh, Ronald's whatever that is, fun, pun tune inside. So this is really beat. It's, you know, good, very good, maybe. Uh, but it was only a few bucks. Uh, these can be pretty pricey. I think, I don't know how many issues there were, but I think Charlton put this out. I found a copy at number three, you know, a couple months back. Um, so pretty decent books. Um, yeah, so for a few bucks, I figured, why not? This is a book I've seen a few times that never pulled the trigger on because it's usually, to me, overpriced, but it's Super Villain Team Up, number one. This one's beat up. Uh, probably, again, VG range, but it was only five bucks, so I figured good opportunity to pick it up. It's Submariner, Dr. Doom, uh, Tiger Shark, and uh, uh, Atuma. Is that Atuma? I believe it is. So, pretty cool pickup there. I've been scooping these up when I find them. I still find them pretty cheap. It's Astonishing Tales, number six. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first appearance of Bobby Morse, who becomes uh, Mockingbird later. So these aren't super pricey books, but, um, you know, again, it's one I've been picking up just because she hasn't made an appearance yet in the MCU, and you never know. Of course, the market is totally cool now, a lot of the spec stuff, but <clears throat> this was 10 bucks, and I bought this uh, <laughs> a few months ago, like I said. So VG copy, 10 bucks. I thought that was pretty decent. Then he had Astonishing Tales number 12. So I think this is... First man thing in a standard comic. Um, again, VG range. A lot, a lot of the stuff I picked up was kind of lower grade. And this was like uh, 12 bucks. So I didn't even know what this was when I saw it. I just happened to be looking up uh, some of the other books in the run because I think he had some. And, you know, I thought that was a pretty good pickup. Another book that was super hot at one point. Uh, Daredevil number 25. At least this one, Silver Age. This is the first appearance of uh, Leapfrog. I, can't, I think the first Leapfrog. I think this was hot for She-Hulk. A pretty cool date stamp here. Uh, 19, December 20th, 1968. Pretty clear. I like when they put the date stamp in some place you can actually 
see it. It stands out. So, um, yeah, I think this got hot for She-Hulk, and I think there was a second Leapfrog that showed up in one of the ASM books from the uh, from the 80s. So, of course, these books have all cooled off, but this was only $10.00. You know, VG copy, Silver Age Daredevil. You probably picked that up, that up regardless. So happy with that. And this guy's prices, he had some books that were like way overpriced. And then he had a bunch that I thought were super, super fair. Um, this one here, just a J. Scott Campbell cover that I had not come across. One of those Xenoscope covers, um, which I don't find a lot, honestly, in the shops I go to. They don't ever seem to have a lot of these. So most of these Grim Fairy Tales and Wonderland covers, if you want them, at least in my era, you got to go on eBay. So this is Grim Fairy Tales number, I think this is 75. Nice copy, near mint copy. Um, and I think this was six bucks. So for me, finding it in a shop in that shape, pretty good buy. Happy to add that to the Campbell collection. All right, next we've got Incredible Hulk 168. I thought this was a pretty good pickup. First appearance of the Harpy. Another one of those keys that doesn't get uh, too, too much attention, but this is a nice mid-grade copy, 1973 Herb Trimpy cover. That was 15 bucks. So, well, I thought that was a pretty decent little key there. This is one I have been wanting for a while, but every time I see it, to me, it's way overpriced. It's I just buy it for the Storanko art. Um, this is the first appearance of Madame Hydra, though, from 1969. This is Captain America 110. I just love Starankos art, and this is one I've wanted for a while, and, and it just every time I come across it, it's it's expensive. So I got this for thirty bucks. It is a nice, uh, probably VG range copy. Um, so very happy to add this one to the personal collection. The Staranko artwork is just awesome. I don't know what this goes for now, but I think it can be a pretty pricey book. I thought thirty bucks was a great buy on that one. So very happy with that one. Next, we just get some Spidey books. I always pick up Spidey if I find it cheap, even if it's books I have. Uh, it's, you know, definitely one of the safest titles to buy if you're looking to, to flip books. Uh, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 98 with the Green Goblin. This is, of course, one of the drug issues without the Comics Code Authority. 97, I think, is, is the highest price one in my preferred uh, cover. Uh, this is actually a Gil Kane cover on this. I believe Romita does 97. So VG copy. I think it's got some water stains and it was uh, 20 bucks. So, you know, probably about what it's worth on that. Next, we've got uh, you fans of Reggie Collects. We'll know this one immediately. We've got Amazing Spider-Man 110. First appearance of the Gibbon. Um, and I lost my place here. Yeah, first appearance of the Gibbon. This one... Mid-grade, VG fine. I think I got, I paid like 25 bucks for this. So when I first got back into collecting, this book was nothing. But I think Reggie has helped uh, influence the value on this, book, <laughs> on this book just a little bit. So for 25 bucks, I figure what the heck. Not a bad uh, little Bronze Age key to add. All right, this is a, a nice, this is a big book. It is shredded though. And, and it's not going to appear that way when I put it up. But uh, this guy had a copy of Tomb of Dracula, number one. And it might be tough to see, but the the corner, you know, like a five, six inch section was ripped off and taped back on. So really stinks, but he had this marked cheap. I think this was 30 bucks. Sorry, it was 40 bucks. Uh, you know, definitely good range. Maybe very good, very good. Maybe a 3-0. Uh, of course, first Dracula and Van Helsing from 1971 with the Neil Adams cover. This one, still a pretty pricey Bronze Age key. So for 30 bucks, whatever I paid, 40 bucks, I wasn't going to leave it behind, even with that uh, that corner ripped off. At least when it's taped on, it's still, <laughs> still presentable, somewhat presentable. Good entry-level copy. So happy to grab that. And he had some... Uh, a little bit of golden age up there, which that's my favorite part walking in these shops I've never been to. And occasionally they'll have like one or two golden age books. And it seems like the, the regulars are just not interested. I find a lot of low grade golden age at, you know, LCS as I'm traveling. I'm always surprised some of them are there. So this was uh witch's tales. What issue is this? I can't see it on the cover. 18 beat up again. Tears on here, but for the most part, artwork is complete. It's probably in the good range. And this one was 30 bucks. It's from Harvey Comics, Lee Elias cover from 1953. So you're going to get some pre code horror for uh, $30. I'm going to take that all day long, even in the good range. This stuff is tough to come by. Uh, 
mid-grade, it's crazy expensive. So most of the time when I'm coming across it, you're buying books in the 2.0 range. So very happy to find that. And then this I grabbed at the time I was out there. This book had gotten, uh, this had spiked a bit because of the Flash trailer with Supergirl with a couple other books. But this is Action Comics 285. This has probably gone way down in value. I'm pretty sure it has uh, got some pen on the cover. But uh, Action Comics 285, Supergirl introduced to the world. I didn't write down the date on this. Uh, but VG copy, and I paid about 60 bucks on this. So I'm not sure what it's worth now at the time. I think it was worth it, but uh, I am sure this thing has come way back down to earth. But still, pretty cool Silver Age. Uh, I'll call it a minor key there. Down to the last three books. Uh, this was on his wall, a Dave Stevens cover I did not have. It was priced. I always hope to find the Dave Stevens stuff cheap because so many shops I go into have Eclipse and Comico and those 80s titles, you know, stuffed in their dollar bins. But man, I've been waiting a long time to find a few of these. So <laughs> if I find them on the wall, priced at fair market value, I'm scooping them up. I especially like it when I'm, I'm hitting up a local shop, exploring even if it's overpriced, if I, if it's a book I've really wanted, I'm just happy to buy it, have the experience buying it from a local shop and just finding it, walking into the shop. So much more rewarding than buying off of uh, eBay because you can find these things all day long on eBay. There's something that's exciting about walking into a shop. There's the book you wanted, you know, and, and taking it home. So anyways, we've got Space Vixens, number 16. Again, Dave Stevens cover. It's a little dirty, not in bad condition, but just, again, one of those awesome Dave Stevens cover. This book can be pretty pricey. The Planet Comics number one is expensive. This DNA Agents 24 can be really expensive. This book in near mint range is like a hundred plus dollar book, uh, raw copy. So this is probably about a VF range. I got this for 40 bucks. So I was very happy with that. And then, like I said, he had a couple more Golden Age books. These are the last two uh, pickups. This is a Alex Schoenberg cover. We have got America's Best Comics. The number's torn off here. America's Best 26 uh, Schoenberg cover. This one actually has a Frazetta, a Frank Frazetta illustration on one of these little one-page text stories. It's just got this little drawing from Frazetta. This is from 1948. You know, chunk missing here. Covers detached, spine splitting. It's got the Schoenberg signature when he was signing it. Alex backwards, so Zella, uh, but pretty cool book. Probably fair, good range, and this was 75 bucks. So again, Alex Schoenberg for under 100 bucks. The book is complete. Uh, that Frazetta illustration, I think, bumps this up in value. It's, again, it's just this one-page little text story. Uh, to me, cool, but I, I'd much, much rather go after the Frazetta covers. So uh, still, under 100 bucks. I thought that was a steal. And finally, some more pre-code horror. This is an EC I did not have. It's not in bad shape at all. This is a weird, uh, I read this one. This is uh, just, yeah, one of those quirky, crazy EC stories. It is Haunt of Fear 16. This is from 1952. Graham Ingalls on the cover. This one was 140 bucks, but it's in, in pretty decent shape. It's a solid VG copy. It does have this corner to torn off. It's got kind of the miscut there, but again, just crazy easy story. I think the guy's dying and he, he blackmails this surgeon into, you know, uh, putting his head on on you know, bodies they dig up from the graveyard. Some just crazy, crazy stuff. I just love a picture of kids going <laughs> into the drugstore, <laughs> putting dime down and going home and reading this stuff as, you know, you know, eight-year-olds. I think it's awesome. So anyways, that is it for the haul, guys. Again, if you're a fan, do me a favor, go down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let me know you, what you think about these books. Talk to you guys soon.